Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and today I'm here with a garter snake. I'm in Orange County, New York, in the Hudson Valley, and I'm here to visit my daughter and her family, and especially my granddaughter, who's about three. Well, the reason I'm sitting on this bench is because when we first arrived yesterday, and it's about mid-April, we sat down on this bench here, and out of the corner of my eye, I spotted this garter snake. So, like I really enjoy doing, today's episode is what I find outside my door. Only this time, it's just outside the door of my daughter's house. So this episode is about the garter snake and a very interesting revelation that only recently occurred. This snake is absolutely considered harmless to humans and still is. However, it was recently discovered that garter snakes are actually have a mild venom in their saliva, so they can be considered venomous snakes. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about the garter snake, how it got its common name, its scientific name, how to identify it, what it eats, why it's the most widespread snake in North America. So stay tuned for this episode of Nature at Your Door. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So the scientific name of the garter snake is Thamnophis sertilis. Thamnosis comes from the Latin, thamno means bush, and ophis means snake. So it means bush snake, which refers to the habitat that it's often found in. It likes grassy, vegetated areas. The last part of the name means garter. <laughs> so the common name is garter snake. So the word garter snake comes from the fact that this snake looked like old-timey garters that men used to wear to hold up their socks. So that's how it got its name, garter snake. The name garter kind of got corrupted into garden snake. You'll often hear, hear this referred to as a garden, garden snake. And a garden snake's not a separate species. It's just a permutation of this name that again relates to the fact that you can find this in your garden. In fact, these snakes are found all across North America. The garter snake is probably the most recognizable snake in all of North America. And in fact, I can't emphasize enough that it's found all across North America. It's probably one of the most ubiquitous snakes there is. You can identify it by these long yellow markings uh, laterally uh, from end to end across its back. It has a relatively small head compared to other snakes and usually is only about 12 to 16 or 12 to 18 inches long. Though some snakes have been reported to be as long as three feet, maybe even a little bit longer. But generally, you find them pretty small. If you look really closely, you'll see they have keeled scales, which means they have a little line going down each scale, just like a boat keel would be. These snakes will look very similar to ribbon snakes, but I think one of the easiest ways to distinguish this guy from a ribbon snake is to look up along the lower part of his jaw, kind of like the scales of his lower lip, and you'll see that they're divided with, with black lines. In the ribbon snake, that's just solid white. These snakes are generally diurnal, and they'll feed on frogs and toads and fish and insects and earthworms. They actually have some resistance to the toxins and salamanders and toads, and some of those toxins will reside in their body for several weeks. So that may be another adaptation for deterrence uh, from being eaten by predators, so that these snakes are also poisonous. So in the last 20 years, scientists discovered that these snakes contain a neurotoxin in their saliva that works on the nervous system of small vertebrates and invertebrates that this snake will try to catch and eat. They're really harmless to human. 
um, the, the worst case scenario, if you're bitten by one of these snakes, you might get a itchy spot or an irritation or maybe just a little bit of inflammation. But they're really, you still have to consider them as completely being completely non-venomous as far as humans are concerned. Now these snakes will bite and some of the smaller ones are very aggressive. And sometimes they will launch themselves and repeatedly bite like my shoe, which they cannot even have a chance to penetrate, and launch their whole body out of the air to do it. So it's kind of funny, they're a harmless snake, but they have a sort of aggressive little personality. This one, however, is really calm and seems to recognize that I'm not trying to eat him and he's very relaxed. The neurotoxin is used to subdue smaller prey items like frogs and toads because the snake when it's hunting will grab onto it and then hold onto it and it's got some teeth in there uh, or on the edge of its bony palate that can hang onto that prey but while it's struggling it's really hard for it to swallow it so it will chew into its prey and the saliva will seep into that chewing that where he's captured that organism and eventually the neurotoxin will act so it can work its way around and swallow the item head first. So garter snakes have another line of defense. They can spray a foul smelling musk as a deterrent against predators. And if that doesn't work, they'll even defecate in order to make the experience for a potential predator to be as unpleasant as possible. When I was teaching biology, I once took out a garter snake to show to my biology class, and the snake, while I was holding him, turned and bit onto the soft part of my skin here, and he just chewed and chewed on it. And I was so surprised, I watched him do it. And when I finally unhooked his mouth from my skin, it left little pinpoints where he had pricked my skin with those teeth. These snakes are remarkably adaptable, both to varied habitats and varied diets, which allows them to occur all across the United States. Some snakes that live near water are very in tune to eating organisms in the water like fish and frogs and tadpoles, while others will adapt to eating earthworms and insects, maybe even an occasional rodent or small bird. Um, and so that really allows them to live in such a wide variety of habitats across the U.S., both because of their versatility in adapting to the habitat as well as their varied diet. These snakes are viviparous, which is kind of interesting and scary for people that don't like snakes. A single female garter snake may give birth to over 50 live young. The other interesting part of their biology is they'll often den in large numbers in the wintertime in hibernaculums. And sometimes there'll be hundreds or thousands of these snakes in the hibernaculum. And when they emerge, they'll often come out at once in a very dramatic migration. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature at Your Door and learned a few new things about this amazing little snake, the garter snake. So if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. I learn so much from them, and I enjoy responding to every comment that I can. So thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. You're not scared. I'm brave. You are brave. Yeah, I'm brave. <laughs> We're not scared at all. She didn't bite you because Pops knows how to hold him. We don't know snakes, but if Pops holds one and lets us touch them, that's okay. But we don't hold them ourselves, right? That's it.